Hi friends, welcome back to another video. So I have been getting quite a few questions asking me about how surgical training is in Germany. Whether you have the possibility to operate during your residency, you know, and things like that. When I was doing my surgical training in India, this used to be a big thing, you know, it <laughs> we used to call them cutting chances. So basically what cutting chance meant was whether you get to operate as a resident in one of the hospitals. We used to be so angry at some of the professors if they didn't let us operate or things like that. But as the years went by and as I trained further in surgery, I realized becoming a surgeon is a long process, you know. You just, in the first two to three years, you just don't understand the gravity of what surgery actually is. You have to learn the skills step by step over several years. A few cutting chances here and there in the first two to three years will bring nothing. You just don't understand what surgery actually is. To get the depth of surgery, you have to assist senior surgeons for a long, long time until you slowly start taking the first few steps towards becoming a surgeon yourself. You have to at least have, I would say, eight to 10 years in mind until you become a decent surgeon. And then it's a lifelong practice. You don't have to worry if, you know, you don't get the opportunity to operate straight away, especially in the first, like, let's say three to four years. Assist as much as you can. The thing with surgery in Germany is, unlike in India or probably even in the UK, you don't have a central authority. What do I mean by this? This means the head of the department of a hospital decides the culture in that particular department. So if the head of the department is somebody who lets, you know, residents come into the operation theater, operate as much as they want, assist in surgeries, then you will have a hospital where you can operate quite early. But if you have a head of the department who believes that residents have to take their time, they have to learn the ward work first, and you because there's no central authority controlling the heads of the departments in Germany, each head of the department decides for himself how he wants to train his residents. You know, so this is the huge difference. There is no fixed rule to say that, you know, you will, you won't have any operating chances or you won't be able to get into the, get into the operation theater. I, I remember once I had done an, done an internship in a urology department in one of the big university hospitals in Germany. So this head of the department was a very old fashioned man. Things had changed in Germany, but he still hung on to the old methods. He was very, very strict with the residents and even with the senior doctors. The maximum a senior doctor could do in the department is open up the abdomen. Basically, three operation theaters would run at the same time for urology in this university hospital. And the senior most surgeon of the department would open the abdomen and wait until this head of the department came in. He would come in, everything had to be perfect when he came in. The abdomen had to be opened. He would just come see and do the procedure and go. And the senior most doctor after that had would just, you know, close the abdomen. This was all they were allowed to do. The actual procedure was done only by him and he was already close to retirement, but he would not let anybody else operate. Even the senior consultant was not allowed to operate <laughs> and he was one of a kind, you know, he all, only drove a Porsche. He did what he wanted. He had a small scooter inside the hospital. He was one hell of a kind, you know, and he used to smoke inside the hospital. Of course, smoking was completely banned inside the hospital, but he would sit <laughs> in the in report room and, you know, keep on smoking some really, really expensive uh, cigars or cigarillas uh, as they call it. Anyways, but I had also done an internship in a, in a vascular surgery department where 
the head of the department had given complete authority to a recent Syrian immigrant doctor to operate as much as he wanted. I mean, obviously, the head of the department had a lot of faith in, in this particular Syrian surgeon. And this Syrian surgeon was given complete authority. So it's always different. There's no fixed criteria to say that, you know, you will not get any opportunities. So a little bit of research will help before you apply for positions. But I would say in the beginning, just take what you get and keep researching as to where you would have good opportunities to assist, try to assist as much as possible. This brings me to one key point. The thing that decides whether you will be able to get the opportunities that you want is German fluency. It always comes down to this. You might have amazing surgical knowledge, but if you cannot speak fluent German, nobody will take you seriously. You will not be able to express your thoughts in the first place. This means nobody will take you seriously. There is a lot of competition in departments to get into the operation theater to assist in major surgeries. How will you be able to express yourself that you want to be the one assisting in this surgery if you cannot speak German fluently? So speaking German fluently is the main criteria that will advance you in a career. Take this in writing. How far you will go in your career in Germany is dependent highly on how well you can speak German. This is, an, this is a major criteria. If you show you can speak German fluently, you will notice that you will be given opportunities more than somebody who cannot speak German fluently, even though he might have more, more knowledge than you. The head of the department is usually busy with administrative stuff. He has to attend meetings. He has to go there. He has to, he has no time to actually take, you know, teach the residents. So it's usually the senior consultant and to some extent the head of the department will decide as to who will get into the operation theater and who will not. You have to be assertive in your attitude, you know, and as an immigrant doctor who cannot speak fluent German, it is very, very difficult. And I will not sugarcoat it. The first two years are going to be very, very difficult. You have to concentrate on mastering the German language and speaking it fluently. Once you start speaking it fluently and then you're able to assert yourself, putting yourself forward, saying that, yes, you want to get into the operation theater, you will slowly start making your way in. Also, many hospitals see how good you are at your ward work. If you are doing your ward work well, you will slowly be given opportunities in the operation theater. Becoming a surgeon is a long process, you know, step by step, step by step. In one of the vascular surgery departments I worked in, the head of the department was very keen that the residents start operating early. You know, he would let us perform small surgeries in the beginning and the next year he would allow us to do a little more complete. By fourth or fifth year, the residents were already doing major bypass surgeries. So it really depends on the department. Don't listen to people who say that you get nothing, you know, you won't get any operating chances. In the beginning, I understand it is difficult. You have to master the German language and then step by step, you will get the opportunities. But you have to master the German language and you have to show that willingness. There is no room for laziness in, in surgical residencies. You have to show the willingness to be able to elbow yourself forward, to assert yourself, telling that you want the opportunity. You know, you have to tell the head of the department that you want the opportunity to work with him or to assist him in surgeries. He will never say, he'll usually say, of course, come and join me. He just is not thinking about you. <laughs> you know, he has his own thoughts and his own responsibilities. He has no time for residence as such, which means, which puts the onus completely on you. So you have to assert and say, you know, you want to assist the surgery. Talk to him in advance. Tell him, you know, you want to assist him and things like that. This is especially common in university hospitals where you see, <laughs> I remember the University Hospital of Heidelberg, the visceral surgery department in the University Hospital of Heidelberg had 130 residents. 
130 residents now most of them were involved either in ward work or research work you know so and you have to be assertive and i would suggest starting off in a smaller hospital and then you know see how it is for you and the best thing about germany is you can always change your field if you don't enjoy surgery you can always switch to another field or if you don't enjoy general surgery you can switch to cardiac surgery or plastic surgery or whatever it is and the more fluent you you are in your german language and the more experience you have the better your chances are so i hope this video helped please subscribe to and click the like button if you have any questions you can post them on my instagram and see you in the next video bye